all of you in this room, I have good news for you. You are not a mistake. You are not a biological accident. You are not a cultural nuisance. You came to this earth because there's something the earth needed that God hid inside of you. You've not been taught this. What I'm teaching you, your parents never taught you. And that's why you're struggling to pay light bills and water bills and, and trying to get along in life because they actually taught you not to find your value. Your gift is the source of your value. You were brought to this planet, sent here by a greater power to deliver something that we need. And God created everything Inspiring habits. with gifts. In other words, you are a package sent to earth to deliver a gift to your generation. You are obligated to us. You owe me what you are carrying. Everything in creation was created with a gift. Everything. It took me 30 years to make that one statement. Research, experience, my own life, studying creation itself. God created nothing without a gift in it. Secondly, a gift is the inherent capacity to fulfill a function that meets a need in creation. Every word is important here. Inherent means no one can give this to you. You came with this. A gift is an inherent capacity which was put in the thing to fulfill a function. And the gift that you carry to fulfill the function is to meet the needs of something else in creation. This is very important. You didn't come to earth for yourself and what you are carrying is not for you education is not a gift that's why you can go to college and get a PhD and still be broke so make a note of this a gift can never be learned it can only be refined you can actually go to school and spend a lot of money going through all kind of universities and never refine your gift because you took the wrong courses most people God forbid went to college and studied the wrong thing because your decision to choose a certain area of study was motivated more by economic potential than personal fulfillment and so now you got the money but you are depressed because you are not fulfilling your gift do not go to school young people to find a gift Single woman, I promise you, you'll never find your gift in education. No prophecy can give you a gift. A prophecy may stir it up. It's inherent. Write this point down, please. The gift is the source of value to the created thing. I'm glad you're here. Because if you understand this, you won't follow the crowd. Let me say it again. Your gift is the source of your value. Your value comes from your gift. So if you never find your gift, you will never be valuable to us. And your value determines how much you make in life. You get paid for the value you bring to the earth. Whatever gives you value is the source of your wealth. This session is probably one of the most important sessions in your life because you are still stuck looking for a job. The employment destroys your gift. It stops you even from thinking about it. Forgive me, but that's just what I believe. If you study all of our culture, all of our cultures, look at our cultures. They are built on employment. When you go to school and you sit in the classroom, the teacher never asks you, what do you think your gift is? They never ask you that. In high school, you ran through all of high school and they, they didn't ask you about your gift. They ask you what career you want to go into. See, your career is not your gift. And you normally go for a career that promises you prosperity. And so here you are, well educated, trained and still trying to pay a phone bill. We have been damaged greatly by our culture. 
We've been damaged greatly by our society. We've been damaged greatly by our educational systems because they have actually been conditioning us to believe that we are only here to find a job, pay some bills, and die. Matter of fact, everything your parents tell you has to do with a job. And so we are conditioned just to get an education, to get a job, and then work in a place we hate for 45 years. And then they give us a clock to go home with, to sit in a rocking chair to watch the rest of our time fade away. This is what they call retirement. Retirement. I was thinking the other day about the word retirement. It means you're tired. So you are retired, double tiredness. You will never become what you could be until you become angry with what you are. Anger brings change. People say that God is love. But the Bible says God also hates things. The great King David wrote seven things God hates. Solomon wrote 14 of them. What do you hate? You can't love everything. Your life is defined by what you hate. Can you write that down right now? Your hatred decides your future. Whatever you don't hate, you allow. And whatever you allow, you will never change. So how does this relate to your gift? I want to give you an answer. Whatever you were created to become, you possess now. This is a divine principle. Whatever you were created to become, you possess it now. In other words, whatever you were born to do is not ahead of you. It's within you. Because whatever you were destined to become, God has prepared you with it. The creator never places the future outside of a thing. It's a very important principle. In other words, you came to planet Earth with your future inside of you. I say it this way, God hid your future in a place where he knew you couldn't miss it. Most of us, based on our culture, have been taught to go and find your future or go to your destiny or go and find God's will for your life. I remember when I was growing up attending religious churches and they used to always tell us, go and find God's will. So I went looking for it, like most of you have been doing. And I never found it. God's will was in a place I never expected. They never taught me to look there. Matter of fact, God loves you so much that his will is not a mystery. The need to feel that you achieved what you set out to do is a human need. Not completing your goal gives you a sense of failure. So uh, these needs are very important. And I want to ask you what I call the human questions. Because they are related to these questions I've been teaching for years. The first question is, who am I? The second question is, where did I come from? The third question is, why am I here? The fourth question, what can I do? And the fifth question that we have to ask ourselves constantly is, where am I going? And all these questions haunt every human. You yourself, sitting here today and watching this program, I know deep in your heart, you grappling with these questions. Every human, seven billion of us, whether we live in a 10-story building or sleeping under a bridge on a cardboard box, these questions are in your mind. Who am I? And most of us find difficulty answering these questions because these questions are very frightening. Ask yourself the first question for a moment. That's silence, huh? Who am I? I didn't ask you what you did. I asked people this question, who are you? I'm a doctor. No, that, no that, that's, that's what you do. Who are you? I'm a nurse. No, that's your profession. Who are you? I asked. Not what do you do? Tough question. To answer the question, you must answer it with two words, right? Who are you? What do you have to answer? I am. And then you got to fill the blank in. I don't think anyone on earth used the two words I am more than Jesus Christ. And that's a good sign because that means he knew who he was. I am the way. I am the bread of life. I am the water. I am 
the door. I am the resurrection. I am the good shepherd. He knew who he was. He didn't do shepherd. He says, I am shepherd. He didn't do door. I am. See, it's a different question. Not a profession. I grew up in Michael Jackson. And we used to watch this little guy on television. Some of you are looking so holy, but you remember, remember this guy? That little kid would take that microphone and mesmerize millions. He never learned that. One time they asked him, I'll never forget the interview. They said, do you love music? He says, I am music. Notice the two words now. I am. What do people pay to see? A gift. Jesus Christ came to earth with a gift. This is found in Matthew chapter 20. He said, the son of man did not come to be served. He said, I came to serve myself a ransom. That means salvation and redemption for mankind. That's why it's called the gift of salvation to many who believe. If you walk out of here and don't eat from the tree of Jesus Christ, you will not have the nutrients for eternal life. Write this down, please. Purpose determines your gift. This is a very important statement. Purpose determines your gift. Now, there's something more important than your gift, and it's your purpose. But your purpose produces the gift. If you can find the purpose of a thing, you'll also discover simultaneously its gift. So if you don't know what your purpose is yet, I guarantee you don't know your gift. I want to just read a scripture for you. Genesis 1. It says, And God made the earth to bring forth grass and herb, and they yielded seed according to their kind. And the tree that yields fruit had the seed of itself inside itself. In other words, the seed of everything is in itself. So God created everything with the seed of itself in itself. When God created you, he packaged you. You came with everything you're supposed to become inside of you. That is your gift. I love this verse. It says in 2 Corinthians 9, Now he who supplies seed, God never gives you trees. He who supplies what? See, God always gives you something with something in it. I'm sure my father used to listen and watch us growing up, 11 of us, you know. And we used to crawl on the floor in Bain Town, the dirty floor. He couldn't have imagined he had a boy with 62 books inside of him. God supplies seed. He gave my father a seed. In that seed was a gift. Your child that you gave birth to is really not who you think he or she is. They're carrying something. That's why they call seeds. The gift is so powerful that it says this in the Bible. Proverbs 18 verse 19. A man's gift makes room for him in the world. And it brings him before great kings. Not him, it brings him. It makes room for him where? In the world. What's the word world? Systems. Listen, the systems want to lock you out. They tell you how far you can go. They stop you from promotion. They hinder you. They even tell you when to retire. They block your advancement. If someone don't like you, you're in trouble. But according to this statement, your gift ignores everybody. It makes room. Even the guy who hates you will come looking for your gift. Every day, now, every day, there's not been a day that I haven't received an invitation to come speak somewhere on the things I am good at. Every day, including this morning, they come looking for your gift. They pay you to deliver it. They may not like you, but they want what you have. Your gift is so powerful, your enemies come and pay you for it. So let me wrap this up for you. Write this down. The gift of the seed is the tree. When you see a seed, it's carrying a gift. 
So a mango seed is carrying a gift. What is the gift? A tree. Where's the tree? On the inside. See, I tell you, the future's not outside of you. Here's another one. The gift of the tree is what? It's fruit. Trapped in the tree is also a gift. It's the fruit. It might be important to mention here at this point that trees never eat their own fruit. I told you that your gift is never for you. It's for meeting the needs of someone else. The mango is full of nutrition, vitamins, minerals, all kinds of good, mature, beautiful stuff to keep you alive. And yet the tree eats none of it. Your gift is supposed to supply the needs of other people. Listen, when you go to the mango tree, you never go to the tree for the bark. You don't go to the tree for the leaves. You don't go to the tree for the branches. You don't go to admire the carvings in the tree. What do you go for? One thing, you're going after the fruit. In other words, people are not supposed to be attracted to you because they may not even like you. But if you manifest your gift and you refine it and you sharpen it and you ripen it, I guarantee you they will walk over their pride. Write this down, please. The gift of the leaves of the tree is what? Oxygen. See, everything has a gift in it. The seed got the tree, the tree got the fruit, and the leaves got oxygen. God created nothing without a gift in it. And if there were no leaves, we would die. We need the leaves of the tree. If you never find your gift, you are a generational thief. Your gift is your obligation. If your gift is supplying someone, they will personally make sure you are maintained. You sound like a tree. If a tree is productive and is giving you fruit, what do you do? You fertilize it, you put water on it, you prune it. Why? Because you want to keep producing. So if you are delivering your gift and you find it and you are effectively delivering that to your generation, they will finance your maintenance. Swimming is inherent in the fish. Fish never attend swimming lessons. They swim in schools, but they don't swim to school. Maybe God brought this session in your life just to check you because maybe you are at the end of your rope where you are frustrated and you feel like you ain't making no headway and maybe you're just tired of life and stressed. Some of you may even be considering divorce or, or getting rid of life or maybe even, even committing suicide and God is saying, hold it. You are loaded. My question is, who are you? Don't ever judge a person the way they are right now. Have you found who you are yet? Your gift is who you are. Don't rob us of who you are.